Hey everybody, we're playing Minecraft again. Now, I haven't recorded in a few weeks, but I have been playing, so I do have things that I want to do and show you. So, let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. Okay, guys, let's fly into our base here, and like usual, I have a bunch of signs and all of that good stuff. So, um, actually, I, I haven't even looked at these since I put them up, which was quite a while. Let's see, what kind of things can we do? I know the first thing... I want to do is play with horses. I've been watching B00 on the Hermitcraft server and I want to do stuff with horses. I it's funny enough that I started playing when horses were introduced around that time and since then I actually haven't done much with them. You know, I've grabbed the horse, but I've never bred them, tamed them, you know, tried to get good stats, built stuff for them. So today we're definitely going to do that. And then I think we're going to build Maybe a berry farm, a sea pickle farm, and then um, there is one, uh, I, I want to call it a mega build, but a larger build that I want to start working on. So let's start off with the horse area. So here is what I want to build. I want to build a very large stable. I want to build a breeding area. I want to build a testing area. And then I want to build an obstacle course that is timed with an active timer. So here is my plan. In this area right here, I'm going to build a breeding area. This entire strip right here will be our stables. This outer edge here is going to be a giant obstacle course. And then over here, I'm going to have the testing area for jumping. And then I will have a little area right here that's decorated that we have kind of a secondary jumping place with, you know, maybe like a trough with water or something over here. So basically, we're going to take this entire area here and build all of that inside of here right behind these farms. Okay, everybody. So it is all done. I'm very excited to show you guys what I did. Now, like I said, there's a couple things that I have to show you. I need to show you the horses, the builds and uh, a lot of the redstone that went in into the testing material i think what i'm going to do first is show you guys the horses talk a little about the horses how i got them and all that and a couple of the funny things that i learned while breeding then i'll show you guys the builds then i'll show you guys the redstone so while i show you the horses just ignore the builds for a moment we'll focus on the builds later but so i guess we could start with the breeding area over here i know right now it's empty but here was nearly 400 horses that are either now in my stables that are good horses or they died over 400 now just so you guys know each horse not only did i have to breed and then wait like 20 minutes for them to grow up but also then i had to tame them and horses are by far the most annoying mob in the game to tame because you have to jump on them and sometimes these horses can literally kick you off for like minutes at a time so i killed 380 now if you include all of the ones that i have in there which is about 20 that means i probably bred like i said around 400 um and these are all of the heads of the bad horses and um i'll talk about this area when i this is but this is this is the speed test here but we'll talk about that when i get to the redstone portion but there is the living proof a solid six years ago i literally this was the first build in this entire area this house this came second and the first two horses were Epona and Sega, and back when I used to have my uh, viewers comment names, there's not enough of you anymore to do that, but these were my first two horses that I got like six years ago, and I tested them, and they're bad. Both of them have awful jumping and awful speed. So, and if you guys know anything about the actual, you know, breeding of horses, when you breed two horses, it basically, it takes the stats of both horses and the stat and then it makes a new stat for the baby third horse and just averages them out so if i have two bad horses the average of the baby is always going to be bad because two two of the three are instantly going to be terrible so basically i just left those horses there they're just basically ancient dinosaur horses at this point what i had to do is i had to go out and adventure and try to find the best possible wild horses that you know can give me a good starting point the better horse that i find in the wild the quicker it is 
to basically breed better ones. So and here is what I ended up finding. Now let me make sure I find them correctly. And each of them have names and stats, but I wanna start you guys off with my first two horses. So we've got Quickster, which I just dubbed as the mom, and Jumpman, which is, I just dubbed as the dad. The reason for this is because when I tested them, the mom was very quick. She was, in, oh, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. When you see the stats, 2.6 jump and 29 stick, the jump is basically, you know, the amount of blocks. I can put eight or nine snow layers to make a full block. I forgot the exact number because it's been a while. Um, I think there's eight. I think it goes up to eight. And then the eighth one makes it a full block. So basically what this is saying is Quickster can jump two blocks and then six snow levels right so instead of just saying oh you can jump one two or three i even broke it down into the secondary snow levels and then the stick basically it's an arbitrary uh clock timer so on the racetrack here i have a redstone um basically timer going and we'll talk about that when i get to the redstone but basically you can see every dun 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 is one stick and then when I, you know, when I hit this, it starts. When I hit over there, it stops. And it gives me the amount of sticks. So it is arbitrary. It's not like one stick per tick. It's basically one stick to whatever I did this. But very importantly, every single horse was measured on the same parameter. So when I say this one's a 29 stick and one is 32 stick, it's the exact same timer. So it's definitive that the 29 stick is faster. But now that that's explained. So this one is an extremely fast horse. A 29 stick, that is quick. Um, the average, like the bulk majority of the ones that I bred were around 34 to 36 stick. So this one is extremely fast. And this one, oh, but it's jump is terrible. 2.6, that's terrible. My average was around you know, three, 3.5. And now we have Jumpman. And this guy has an extremely high jump of 4.1, but an extremely low speed of 4.5 stick. So these are the two that I started with. One that is very quick and one that can jump very high. And I ended up with basically these horses over here. So these are all bred horses. And I basically just kept the best ones out of the 400 these i think about 20 are the best ones so i'm going to introduce you to every single one of them and give you their stats and yeah um the ones in armor are basically like my studs those are those are the best ones that i've bred so far um so we're gonna show you guys those last so we'll start over here um but one last note before um i show you guys i should talk a little bit about um, as far as the stats go, like I said, from jumping, you can go to one all the way to a five, a five being a perfect horse. Like I said, the way that breeding works is it takes the averages of the horses. So a lot of people are going to try to breed to get a perfect horse, but that's technically impossible. Um, you can't get a perfect horse through breeding, because if you think about it logically, Let's just say you have a horse at 4.7 and then a ho another horse at 4.7 and you breed them. The average is always going to be lower than five because let's just say, you know, the horse that I bred becomes a perfect five, but it averages with these lower scores. So it's never actually going to reach a full five. The only way. This is the only way to get a perfect five horse is to find one in the wild. A horse can spawn with a perfect five, but a perfect five can never be breedable because the only way to breed a perfect horse is to breed a perfect horse. A five can make a five, but two 4.6s will never make a five. So first we've got Obanga. A lot of these names are going to be weird. Um, I mostly just based them off of either pattern or if I just thought they were funny. So this one, I just thought um, I'm going to name Obanga. He, ha he is a 3.6 jump, which is just about average, and a 31 stick, with which is just about average. And most of these guys are average, minus these couple up front. 
Next, we got two here. We got tree bark because of the, um, I guess, pattern. And we've got uh, thick shady. Both of them are average. 3.6 jump, 32 stick. I have Ash and Wendy. So Ash because of the pattern up top and Wendy because I think I had Wendy's fries while breeding these ones. So I named one Wendy. Um, average 3.7 jumps, 32 sticks. So slightly better jumpers than them, but um, also, you know, average speed still. Then we have uh, Skidmark because he's brown and another average 36, 32. We have... Um, Long John and Patches, so Patches because of his pattern, and Long John because I'm pretty sure I had Jimmy Johns while breeding that one. So 37, 32 stick, Patches and Long John. Next, we have two more horses. We've got uh, Slip Slide and we have Dirt. Um, dirt because he's brown and Slip Slide because genuinely I have no idea. I think I just named him Slip Slide. He's not particularly fast, so I guess Slip Slide it is. Next, I have Danny and Choco Cake. So Danny, I was thinking of Danny Phantom. Obviously, he's a ghost, and that horse is white. And then Choco Cake, because this pattern reminds me of a chocolate cake. And they're both 3.7, 32. So just about average. Next, we have uh, Ghost Mane and Underbelly. Um, so Underbelly, I don't really know. He doesn't have anything on his belly. I wonder if, I don't know. I think I was thinking of pirates at the time. There's a couple other ones that are named after pirate things. Maybe I watched Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't remember. Again, the breeding took place over weeks. Um, and then we have Ghost Mane because once again, just like Danny over there, he's white. I was thinking of ghosts. So his name's Ghost Mane. That is Underbelly. Average horses, 3.7, 32. But again, I keep saying these are average horses, but they're really the the very, very they're very good horses. There, there was 380 other ones that were killed. To make room for these 20 so they're they're pretty good um looks like i have an empty slot here i have mcnugget um another average horse and mcnugget because i think i was eating mcdonald's at the time so you could see a pattern wendy's <laughs> uh um jimmy john's and mcdonald's let's see what else i have donald and mike um both average horses i think this one is donald i think i I was watching some like YouTube video about Donald Trump, so his name's Donald. And then I've got Mike. Um, I don't know, just sounded like a funny name. And I know a few Mikes in real life, so I thought I'd make one of them a horse. Okay, and that is all of my horses. And again, these are all really good, but just about really good average. Now, time to show you guys my stars. So um, this is, and again, just now just remember the figure. This is 3.733. That's an average. So. Over here, I've got Jump Boy. We've got Jump Man, but this is Jump Boy because he is technically the son of Jump Man, but he has sur uh, surpassed his father. He is a 4.2 jump, 34 stick. So very good jumper. 34 stick is slightly slow, but a very good jumper. So at, on average, he is much better than all other horses. And now we've got basically my two star horses here i've got blackbeard which is a 3.7 jump which is again not as good as the 4.2 but very good and the reason he's one of the best is because he has a 3.7 but he's also speedy at 31 stick and i've got star which is a 4.1 jump and a 32 stick so if we're gonna take the average of everything star here is my best because um i'm gonna I'm just assuming it's a girl. She has almost a better jump than my best jumper. And she's a 32 stick, which is almost as good as my best runner. So on average, Star here is my best horse. Now, um, the redstone design for this is one of my own. I didn't, I just made my own timer. So it's not the best, but it's a good timer. So let me show you guys the system. Obviously it is, uh, it's based on tripwire hooks. So when a horse goes past here it activates one pulse and when it gets to the end here it activates a second pulse and that turns on well technically let me now get to the redstone the timer is always on but it is only using the timer when this block is in the way okay so back to the redstone there is a timer going here so basically what happens when a block is here 
the pulse is now extended into this dropper that throws items above. If there's no block, it doesn't go through. So, when a horse hits this first tripwire hook, it pushes the block here and the timer starts. Every single pulse, another stick gets thrown into this chest right here. When I hit that second tripwire over there, it basically pushes the block from here, it pushes it back into the off state and no more sticks go through. It's a very easy just flip flop. And then um, for the obstacle course area, which I'll show you guys, it uses the exact same system. So for this one, I have it under here. Yeah, and this one, luckily at the start and stop is like right here. So it's not too far away, but same exact system with that timer. And it looks like I need to fix that timer. Sometimes they bug out, um, but here is the design. It just uses some wood, some stone and some accents, you know, some of the lanterns, some of these cobble fences. Um, from the inside, there's just dirt, there's a little bit of fences, and a little roof area. From the outside, I'll kind of give you a better look here. And so what I did is I created, oh, and I guess for the redstone area, I totally forgot, I made this little gazebo here. I could put scores on this wall, and obviously all that makes sense. So, for the stables, I made four right here. Again, this is for my special horses that aren't actually good at their job. These are my legacy horses, and I have two more spots for someone else. And then over here, I built my actual, you know, these are my racing horses. So I built four stalls there, four stalls there, and then four stalls in the middle with some paths connecting them and some sea uh, lanterns on the floor to make sure no mobs spawn. So yeah, and then I built a road all the way around all of the stables. And then back here is an area I haven't shown you yet because this is purely decorative. This was my initial jumping test area, one, two, three, four, or five. But then of course I needed to get technical with the snow layers. So I actually test them over there. Also that's closer to my breeding area. But here is more of a decorative version of that. So I have some, you know, hay blocks. I did the same timer, of course, like I said, but I've got an easy area, which is the green, an intermediate area, which is the yellow and the hard area, which is the red. Now, um, I haven't finished with the red yet. I did the green, I did the yellow. I'm not done with the red. So right now it is incomplete, but you know, I did a lot of work on the segments that I did make. So let's go, go ahead, ahead and do our first test run on the course. And I will use star, which is my best horse here. Oh, I never even showed you guys me actually riding any of my best horses. So yeah, this is star. You can see pretty high jumper. It's some good stuff. Not perfect, um, but honestly, 4.2 jump, which is, you know, 80%. That's good. Um, but yeah, okay. So let's go ahead. Um, I reset the timer. There's nothing in here. When I touch that, the race officially starts. So um, I guess let's go for... Um, see, I would go for a best score, but the thing is, it's not technically done yet. So this is more going to be practice. When I get the red done, then I can officially start scoring. Because obviously my scores now are going to be better than when I actually do the red part. But let's get started. So just a little bit of bobbing, weaving. You can see this looks simple, but you can actually get stuck pretty easily. And then here, I think the best method is to just jump your way out. But see, again, you can get kind of, you can stuck, get in stuck in blocks and that can slow you down. Um, see right there, again, I messed up. I could do that a lot faster here. If I just hit those, a little bob and weave. And then I got to try to avoid as much water as possible. See, and right there I fell in and that could have been avoided. And once again, that could have been avoided. So yeah, this is definitely not one of my best runs. But it shows you guys that it's not actually as easy as you might think. Not as easy as you might think as I get stuck in cobweb. That could very easily be avoided if I wasn't a doofus. Okay, I'm going to try to avoid jumping so I don't hit the cobwebs. I'm going to try to... Oop, and then I fell in the water. All right. Okay, we made it. Th that was, again, very slow. But hey, first time in a couple weeks. Okay, now we get to the intermediate part. I think I could just jump straight. Nope. Okay. So it looks like I'll have to jump here. And then I'll jump, bam, over here. And then bam, I'll jump over here. And I'll stop here. I'm not taking any chances here. If I fall, I'll be mad. Bang. I'm going to try to run it. Okay, we did the dash. Made it through here. Okay, now I have to be careful. Okay, I made it past there. I know I could probably just straight jump to the second one, but I'm going to be a little careful here. 
in that fall. But again, luckily, we just we can start back up here at the painting and once again, try not to fall in. You know, I'm going to try to make it bang. Okay. Now, this is actually the hard part here. Um, oh. It's actually harder than you might think. Bam. And then, if I had a red portion, I would be, you know, struggling right here. But, sadly, I'm not struggling. And stop. So that... You saw, you just heard the piston. So a total of a stack and 25 sticks. That is my total. Now, I didn't realize how long it would take me to actually talk about the horse stables. That was probably a good 25 minutes. So I don't have a, you know, crazy amount of time for the rest of this episode. But we'll do a couple of the things here on my list. So um, I, f I fixed the initial B area. Um, so if you guys know, we have that uh, bee farm uh, near our, you know, our TNT area. But our original area for our bees was right here. So this was basically just kind of like wild bees. If you put a campfire under the beehive, they actually are no longer aggressive and you can grab their honeycomb without them fighting you. So I went uh, below it created a nice little area here, lit it up with some more uh, sea lanterns, and added the campfires below every single hive. So now, you know, I have a farm, so I don't ever actually have to come here and use shears, but if I do, I have that option. They are now smoked off, which is super nice. So yeah, that was just a quick little build right there. Another thing that I wanted to build that is just something I had to have that is extremely far small is a sea pickle farm so this is it um, i'm not going to even show you the tutorial just literally look up small sea pickle farm but the entire farm is just this small it basically consists of a piece of coral which i actually put the sea pickle on an observer which triggers the clock for the bone meal which obviously the bone meal grows the pickle and then i have a piston let me go on a spectator i guess and then I have, it's very compact. It's, I'm proud of how compact this is. Although not my design. This is not my design, full um, transparency. And then I have this piston here that actually pushes the pickle off. Um, and I collect them. The farm in action. So if I grab some sea pickles, I stand right here. And I hold it down. Oop, I came a little too close. I have to stand a little bit away from the, um, the block itself because it pushes. So you can see here, I just hold it down. The observer sees the new sea pickles there, which it triggers the bone meal to go, and it grows a new sea pickle. Now, this farm, I don't have an auto picker upper. It actually just gets sent into my inventory. Um, but that is because, obviously, the farm is so compact that it doesn't have room for an item collection system. And then when I'm done, I can literally just stop holding it. I can stick the rest of the sea pickles in here. And you can see I already made a stack of sea pickles. And in this in worlds you, you often don't need that many sea pickles so something small like this is really really nice to have i don't need an, industri an industrial sea pickle farm i'm good with just this and i've got a little hole area if i wanted to refill the bone meal i could just stick it through this little hole cool so that is the sea pickle farm all right let's look at what else i did um i made more rockets and added extra storage for the food and rocket area so um, wherever I had room in between the redstone, I basically just stuck a hopper and a fence, and now I have extra storage. So, this will run out much, much slower, because I'd have to replace it every, like, week or two. Now, it's probably gonna last me a good couple months, I would hope. Um, so yeah, that's super nice. A little bit of extra storage, and obviously I made more rockets, and I made more food. But by making food, I mean trading with the villagers okay guys and the last thing i'll do for today i will save the fox or the not the fox farm the berry farm and the compact cocoa farm i'll save that for next episode along with the building but i do want to give you guys a preview as far as this giant building here that i told you guys to ignore i do want to tell you what it is so i started on the backbone of this building already i put in about uh two hours into the building and this is all that i have so it is pretty large um, so you might be wondering, uh, what is it? I don't know what's going to go inside. I have no idea. Uh, I told myself, Hey David, um, you need to build something. You haven't built something in quite a while, you know, something large, you know, a building like this or a wall or you haven't built something large. You need to start. So I said, okay, cool. Um, I put on uh, crazy frog 
and I started thinking using my big old noggin and I thought, hey, you know what's cool? Basalt with my brand new basalt farm that's not technically very new, but um, basalt farm right there. I want to build a giant scary tower thingy with um, a little glass area at the bottom, which I'll show you a cool little fog effect with the glass. But basically what my plan is, is I have, um, and I guess this is like the rough model here. Oh, I actually died. And that is um, why you keep totems of undying with you. That I have one area, two area, three area, and basically all of those are gonna come up just like this one. Cause I built this one just so I could kind of show you guys a sample. All of them are gonna come up like this and they're all gonna meet. So the only part that's actually gonna be open is these doors right here. So I have four doors. I have one big door here, one big door here, one big door, he oh, sorry. Uh, one big door here and one big door right here so you could see if this hat was you know covered here you know this would be a giant door and then um i'll have areas you know inside of the actual actually no, i'll go in here this is a better example i'll have area inside of here to build something um and i don't know what i'm gonna put in here but i'll have four areas um so yeah that's the simple design of it i'm just after this episode, I'm just going to start working on it. But you guys might be wondering, what do you plan on doing in the middle? Well, I'm going to do a little cool glass trick that's become popular in Minecraft as of recent. I could show you guys this little glass trick so you can see if you layer glass with one spot in between each of them, it makes this cool little fog effect. And you can kind of like, you know, you could put, you know, you don't have to put stuff in there. You could put stuff in there to make it, you know, give it a bit of texture. But... It just brings out this little, you know, like fog effect and you can make them different colors. You can make it green or red or purple, but I plan to do this with, I just have to run back in here with this entire bottom area over here. So this entire area is going to be using that glass trick. Now I haven't decided whether it's going to be red or purple or maybe even green or blue. I don't know. But I'll decide that next episode. But that is my intention with this build. And by the time uh, you see the next episode, it might most likely be done. Um, so guys, I know there's a couple of the things that I built. But I'll show you guys those next episode. Of course, I've been playing for like a month now without recording. So I'm not going to show you guys everything in a single episode here. Um, but guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to like and comment as it's the channel. And I'll see you guys later. God bless and goodbye.